the final round of the Scottish Rally Championship and some of the finest scenery of the series. Playing host, the dramatic landscape of southwest Scotland in the Galloway Forest Park and around the shores of Loch Doon. I think that psychologically it gives you a little bit of advantage. It's your home event, it's, it's the home crowd and you want to be trying just that little bit hold, uh, harder than, than normal. I don't know the stage is any better than anybody else. I haven't been in them any more frequently, but um, most people tend to go a little bit better on the, the local events. So, yeah, it's a help. So what's your tactics for this event? Well, there's been a man who's been a real pain to me all year, and I think this is the last opportunity. He's got nothing to lose. I've got nothing to lose. And I just really want to have a good fight with Brian today. Well, the tactics for today is to go out and just have a, a steady day. Um, Jim Carty and Neil Dugan are both ahead of us. Uh, Jim Carty on drop scores is level with us, so it all becomes a bit um, arithmetical at this stage in the game. What we've got to do is go out and do what we've been doing all season and have a solid, steady run, hopefully finish in the top five, and then work the points out afterwards. Yeah, we're having a little shot at co-driving. It's the way I started rallying, so we're back to the start again. But uh, no, I just said I'd uh, sit beside Ian, we'd have a bit of fun today. That's what it's all about. You got faith in him? A lot of faith in him, yeah. No problems at all. Ian uh, does a lot of servicing for me when we're doing the national championship, so it's reverse roles today. Have you got faith in him? Oh, he's been around a long time. <laughs> so do you think he'll be beneficial? He'll know the oh, I think he could help me, give a few tips on how to go fast, maybe. <laughs> you won't be swapping over drivers during the rally. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Don't trust him that much. <laughs> <laughs> One, go. Left seven, 40. King flat left one, right one. Right one, left one. As we go in car with Brian Lyle, we can see just how slippy and wet the conditions are. Co-driver John Benny talks his way through this stage north of Del Mellington, which hasn't been used for many years. Right two and left five, 70. Flat crest, right one. 40 over bumps, left three in and crest. Right three long, tightens to five, adverse. 50. Danger, crest into sudden right eight. Into left seven in. Opens to three long over crest. 50. Left two in over crest. 60. Left two in over crest. 70. Right five in. Lyles had a great year, winning just about everything in sight, and here he was aiming for, and was well on course for, his record eighth successive win in the championship. His only possible challenger was Neil Dugan, who wanted to win on home ground and stop Lyles' attempt. But he was thwarted on the very first stage when he lost 40 seconds with throttle problems, again with oil pressure and electrical trouble. Veteran campaigner Jimmy McRae was out again in the development four-wheel drive Porsche, and it was going well. And the Aberdonian Sandy Delgano was also set for a good day in his Escort Cosworth. Jim Carty had a great start in his Metro 6R4, setting second fastest times on both the first and second stages. But it wasn't to last. In a similar car, this is John Byrne, who also had a good start. Anchorman man Duncan Jaffrey stayed up amongst the leaders with a steady start. And Alan Dixon was certainly making plenty of noise in his Escort Cosworth. This is the X-Works Subaru of former world champion Carlos Sainz, here in the hands of Peter Vassallo. 
Andrew Wood had a day-long battle in two-wheel drive and would eventually finish ninth. George McDonald started well and was leading his class but was about to roll on the next stage. Local driver Sam Mullen knows the stage as well, so he abandoned his pace notes. Jimmy Patterson was at the wheel of Phil Walker's Mazda, but things weren't going well. Well, oh, just about three quarters of a mile in the, from the beginning of the first stage there. Uh, there seems as though there's been a component failure in the car. The, the, the back of the, as you can see, the, the rear near side of the car, uh, the suspension's collapsed for some reason or another, so the boys are just trying to find out when it went wrong. But that then resulted, we have to drive the following nine miles with um, this suspension problem, which has caused the tyre to rub up against the bodywork, and because it's been rubbing up against the bodywork, uh, we took a puncture, and it punctured the other tyre as well, so it was uh, very, very slow going through there. I think they achieved an overall speed of about 10 miles an hour, you know, something like that. So repairs underway, and the owner was on hand. I'm having a kind of out-of-body experience here, you know. I should be in the car driving it in one sense, but we couldn't be here on time for the start of the rally, so Jimmy Patterson has been driving it. He's had the kind of luck that seems to have afflicted us from time to time, uh, but the boys are well on top of it. It's a broken upright, and the drive shaft's been damaged as well, but they'll have it fixed, don't worry. The weather wasn't getting any better as the rally moved to Glen Trull and the longest stage of the day. Lyle was well in command, but here he suffered slight damage to his steering after a hard landing. Let's go back in car with Lyle for some of the stage. Logs all the way, 40 right through and over crest, 40, crest 60, crest jump, 40, crest and left two in, and crest jump into right three, 40 right one in over crest, 50, flat crest, 100 over small crest, Small crest logs, 50. Deceptive right, 7. Forty left, 3. Crest, danger, right, 3. Narrow. Logs on road. And left, 4. Long, into crest, right, 7. Care. Forty right, 7. 50, left, 6. 50, right five into left seven. Eighty over small crest. Here, narrow left seven. And right six long. Forty, left three in. Forty. Small crest, right four into left five. Right five, very long, tights to six. Into danger, left three, tights to seven, sudden. Into right eight. Forty, right two in. And care, left two in over crest. Into care, narrow right five, no cut. Fifty, left three over crest. Forty, loose left six. 70, care, bridge, right, 7. 50, right, 1 over crest, and left, 9. Right, too long, and turn right, 9, tight. 40, left 4, 50, long crest jump, 50, crest jump, 50, small crest, left 3, immediate, right 3 in, into left 5, long, into care, right 6, left 4, small crest, 50, right 2 over bump, 50, right 2 long over bump, opens to 1, Long over junction 50, crest jump into small crest left 5. And right 6. 40, right 4. 
So, some quick repairs, and Lyle is happy about his prospects. Well, we're uh, currently leading. So, uh, from uh, Mr. McRae Senior. <laughs> so, uh, we'll try and uh, maintain that through the last two uh, stages. We're going to have a play around with the diffs now. Because the car, I'm finding the car moving around an awful lot in the road. So, uh, we're going to tighten the, uh, the diffs up and see whether that makes any difference or not. Take it from there. Meanwhile, the McCray Porsche was going well, but never quite able to keep up with Lyle. It's going all right today, eh? It's uh, better than we thought. We're sort of hanging in there, not that far away from Brian, and I think we are quicker than the rest of them, so it's good. Sandy Delgano was trying hard, but he felt he just couldn't get to grips with the stages. Uh, a little bit off pace, it's been uh, pretty slippy. Second stage was good, enjoyed it, same with the first. But uh, the last stage I found with the logging in that we had a little understeer into a pile, a log of piles, nearly, a pile of logs nearly. And uh, But no, we've been, been enjoying it, good fun. But Jim Carty's rally was about to end with a broken rear differential. John Byrne, meanwhile, was setting reasonable times and was content to make it to the end of the event and the championship. We had a bit of a rough start. We uh, tried a bit too hard in the first stage and spun. So uh, we're, we're trying hard to make up the time, but uh, everybody else seems to have problems around about us and we seem to be, uh, be going OK at the moment, so it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, my co-driver just away to try and get a better idea of where we're at. It's a wee bit up in the air at the moment, but uh, stages are good, um, quite quick bit scary, but uh, we're doing okay at the moment, so we'll just pour along. The steady pace continued for Duncan Jaffrey. <laughs> While Alan Dixon seemed to be putting all his efforts into improving his position. And again, he was relying on his service crew. Well, it's been going not badly. We've had a reasonably, reasonably steady run. Watching other people having problems and trying to keep out of problems ourselves. The, um, the stages have been very slidey, which suits us and gives some of the more powerful cars less of an advantage. And we've been able to exploit that a bit. Um, stage two, we felt we went very well. Maybe didn't get the time we deserved, but um, we're just trying to recoup the 15 seconds we seem to have lost but we're hanging in there and hoping that other people hit problems we've got two stages to go and if we can just keep out of trouble we're changing the front discs because they're getting a bit overheated and a bit cracked um, apart from that the car seems fine Neil Duggan was trying hard anxious to regain some of the time lost earlier in the day we had an oil pressure problem in the first stage and in the second stage, we ended up with an electrical problem, which took us an awful long time to trace. We dropped a minute to Jimmy McRae in the stage, and we've dropped some road time as well. The um, problem seems to have resolved, it's resolved itself now, and we've climbed back up the field, so we're just looking for a good run through the last two stages. This is Peter Vassallo again, but his rally was about to end just a little while later. Bearing the scars of his role on the previous stage, this is George McDonald, but his rally was coming to an end. Jimmy Patterson was back on the road again after his earlier suspension problem. is Alan Barr trying to get to grips with his old escort.
start with uh, just finding my feet again with the with the old car. Um, but once we get going, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Biggest problem was the last stage. Uh, it wasn't long enough. <laughs> We're looking for more miles. Rory Christie was out again and getting the most from his elderly Talbot Sunbeam. Callum McKenzie had travelled from his home in Stornoway, but had fallen foul of gearbox problems. His service crew had their hands full, not least trying to find their tools stored in fish boxes. What's the reason for that linkage? What's the lever? The lever's not left in the van. What's the reason for the linkage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should have put you put the lever together. The lever's in the gear. In the. Yeah. Fish box. In the fish After box. the two wee stages last night for noisy gearbox, so uh, we ran to Glasgow late last night, managed to get hold of a box of uh, Bulgaria. So we just had to make it through the easy, you know, take it easy through the, these uh, two stages. And uh, now we're just going to change the box and maybe better go in the afternoon. You know. This is the Peugeot 205 with Neil Ogilvy, who went on to win his class. Donald Smith has a flamboyant style, but it was to catch him out just a mile down the road. He flew off into a ditch. Traffic policeman Stuart McLaren wasn't worried about the speed limit here, but he did have other problems to contend with. Join him and co-driver Donald left McLeod. Line, no cut, log. And that's Donald Smith's car stopped on the right. Left two in. See how Stuart's driving style in the lighter Toyota Corolla is so much different from the heavier Subaru right one, of Lyle. 50, caution, deceptive right four in through crest. 50, right three in. 40 left, 2 in through crest, 60 long crest, 40 downhill, caution, deceptive, right 2 tightening to 5, left 2 in through crest, right 1 no cut ditch, 80 right 3. Watch on the left for Peter Vassallo's co-driver, warning of the Subaru parked on three wheels. What a nice car, 60, left one in. Yesterday the engine management system packed in. I actually got a spectator from Air last night that had the same car. We've robbed his engine management system and injectors just to get the thing to go. In the stages this morning, there's no power below 5,000 RPM. First and second gear, it's jumping out of gear. So we're having a, a trying day, but we're still here. The main thing is to get to the end of the rally. And here's an unusual rally car, the 1.3 Fiat Uno of Tom Hyde. But it was clearly Lyle's day, and a record eighth win out of eight rallies, easily giving him the Scottish title. But McRae gave him a close run on this final event, just 42 seconds behind. Andy Delgano picked up throughout the day and he was happy with third place. In fourth place, John Byrne finished in exactly the same time with 46 minutes, 15 seconds. went to Duncan Jaffrey after another steady and controlled drive. And 
Neil Dugan had to settle for fifth place after his problems earlier in the day. Alan Dixon came home seventh. had a class win in his sunbeam. And 21st overall was the final placing for Stuart McClam. But the man who sent both the Scottish and National Championships in a spin this year, and winning them both convincingly, is Brian Lyle. And this is how the Scottish Championship ended, with Lyle the clear 1997 champion.